Let's read together from James chapter 5. See, behold how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and the spring rains. You too, be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. Pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Pray for each other so that you may be healed. I remember the first time I actually saw it, literally. I visited the church, and at the end of the sermon, the minister asked if there were anybody that was sick. They're welcome to stay behind after the service, and he and some of the elders will lay their hands on them, anoint them with oil, and pray for them. I was from another faith tradition, and I've never seen something like this. So I was very curious. I stayed behind. And uh, they weren't in a hurry. They took more time to pray for five people than for the whole service. And something that struck me was that they actually prayed with an expectancy as if something can happen there at that moment. I was also very skeptic. So I went up to one of the elders and asked him, how can you do something like this? He took his Bible and he read the passage that we've just read. And it was the first time ever in my life that I heard about it. And, and I said, but it's amazing. Um, and I wonder why don't we do it at our church? And he said something that really triggered something in my life. He said, son, you can come to know Jesus as the Savior of your soul, the baptizer in the Holy Spirit, and the healer of the, 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 the diseases of your body. I went on a journey right there. I wanted to know more. Uh, I did Bible study. I read a lot of books and I, I interviewed a lot of people. Ask them what they feel about it. And I was particularly interested in doctors that also pray for their patients. Up to today, one of my best friends is a doctor that also pray for his patients. This journey took me to the hilltop of ecstasy, but also took me to the deep valley of disillusionment. And I'm still on that journey. And that journey is a wonderful journey to me, and it's a particularly for the times that we are living in. With this pandemic, I think the whole issue of healing has become so important. There's so much brokenness, there's so much sickness, there's so much suffering physically, but also emotionally through the trauma of all the losses that we have to deal with. Socially, the loneliness, but also the breakup of a lot of relationships. Spiritually, some of us are really struggling with our faith. And some of us sit with a lot of fear in our lives. We need healing. It's for people like us that James wrote his letter. He starts his letter with suffering. Why suffering? What is suffering? And he ends his letter with practical advice of things that we can do and must do during times of suffering and sickness. And there's big, three big themes. He, he encourages us to practice our faith through long suffering and to practice our faith through community and then also through prayer. 
And I think it can be summed up in this one sentence. Pray for each other so that you may be healed. So let's look at it. Pray. Pray for each other. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone sick? Let him go to elders and ask them to pray for him. That's James' advice. Now, prayer means a lot of things. But one of the things that it, it means is to ask God for something. And it sounds so simple, but it can be so hard to get to the place where you really ask and ask God for your healing. First of all, you've got to realize that you need healing. And perhaps you've got to change your definition of sickness. It's not just something physical. It's also something emotional, social. And it's easy, easy for us to acknowledge that we are physically sick. And a lot of people won't condemn you if you say, I'm, I'm physically sick. There are some sicknesses that we would rather not talk about or acknowledge that we have it or tell anybody that we have that type of sickness. But when it comes to the emotional and social stuff in our lives, it's sometimes more difficult to acknowledge. And this week I prayed for, with someone that said, um, I've got this tension in a very important relationship that I'm living with. And that relationship needs healing. There's no love. There's no listening. There's no acceptance. Would you please pray for me? I, I couldn't believe it. You know, a, a lot of requests are usually to pray for the other person that's wrong. But he acknowledged the brokenness in his life. We are all broken. We all need healing and wholeness. So acknowledge it. And then you ask God, and not only God, you ask God other people as well. That's what James says. To be able to do that, you've got to become vulnerable. My definition is vulnerable, or vulnerability is, um, it sounds true and it feels bold. When you are, when somebody else is vulnerable, it just sounds true. This person is telling us something that's real, that's important. It's what it is and it's what it's like. And you can feel the boldness when somebody does it. Do you know that's exactly what Jesus did? At the end of his life, he wasn't ashamed that, that he was anxious. And he asked his disciples, please pray with me. If Jesus did it, how much more should we be able to do it? But when we do it, it's the first step to open ourselves up for the power of God to flow in our lives. There's something else that James encourages us, and it has to do with how we have to pray. He says, not just once, keep on praying. Unfortunately, in the New International Version, the word was dropped. It's a difficult word in the Greek, and we don't really understand what the word means. But in the Amplified Bible, that gives us a few options and descriptions of the meaning of uh, important words in Greek. It says, it's an earnest, continued, heartfelt prayer of the righteous man. So he encourages us to keep on praying. The suggestion is this, that if you pray, it might not happen immediately. Most of the time, it doesn't happen. But don't lose heart. Keep on praying. Now, James, the brother of Jesus, is exactly what Jesus taught. He said, oh, I'm telling you stories so that you will never get discouraged and lose heart, but that you will keep on praying. Luke 18.1. And he says, if, if you have a good friend and you're in trouble, you can go to him. It doesn't matter what time of night it might be. And you knock on that door and you'll keep on knocking until your friend opens that door for you. Jesus said, pray and keep on praying and the door will be opened unto you. So James says, just like Jesus, look, behold, a farmer. Look at what he does. He's that is nature, seasons, 
the ground, the seed, what seed would be best. He's got, he's got to get his timing and everything right if you want a good crop. And then he plants it. He did what he had to do and can do. But then you've got to wait for the rain to come. Only God can give the rain. And only God can make that seed grow. That's the miracle. And um, so you can predict when the rain will come, but you're not in control of it and you're not always right. Sometimes, mysteriously, the rain doesn't come at the time. It usually does. So the laws of nature are there, but we are not in control of those laws. And we can't really alter those laws. And it's important for us to do that study and then pray, wait. If James would speak to us today, he would say, friends, there's no tension between science and religion. Science has de developed to a tremendous extent. I mean, take the body, for instance. You have specialists on eyes, on nose, on ears, on the mouth. Any part of your body. You've got specialists, people that dedicate their whole life into understanding just that part, how God has made it, how is it functioning nature. We've got people studying trees, studying ground. We've got people studying just one seed, like millies. And that's maize. It's the only thing that he knows something about. It's an incredible world that we are living in. It's also very um, difficult. Because there's this information overload and I don't exactly know what and how it's going on. But he doesn't replace religion. The other side will be pray and wait on God. Now two things. First of all, it's not either or, it's both. I realize as a youngster, I was brought up in a church that know how to plant and to study nature. And that's why most of our prayers when it came to healing was to acknowledge the laws of nature and how, how God created us. So we pray for the doctors. We pray for the medicine. We prayed strange prayers like bless the hands of the doctors that are going to do the operation. I don't know what that means. Perhaps not to shake. I don't know. But we prayed it that way. And then... I discovered the other people that believed in the rain, the intervention of God, the miraculous work of God. And I moved from the one side to the other side. For me, it was either or. For seven years of my life, I didn't take any medicine because I felt that I want to trust God. He's my healer. I don't want to trust in, in men's knowledge and what men do. And I now realize there's no tension. I remember one day I was meditating on the story about Jesus' temptation and I realized that the temptation for Jesus to jump from the pinnacle of the temple perhaps was to ignore the law of nature that God put in place. Um, can't go against gravity. That's how God created world, the world. Work with it. Otherwise, you can get hurt. It's still happening today, that tension. One of my friends, I'm very concerned about him, doesn't want to take any medicine in the pandemic. He only trusts God, he said. And there's no tension, according to James. You've got to embrace both. both of them are from God and God heals both ways. Another tension that I found is this not only on the side of religion and faith. Some people put their faith in their faith and they put their faith in a practice or they put their faith in a ritual and they ignore everything else. On the other side, there are the people that put their faith only in science. And I believe we will win this war and we will eventually conquer and know it. And I also think through the advancement of, of, of science, we are going to conquer it. But I realize it's only through the gaze of God. God helps us to understand, to get the insight, to, to evolve. But we will get to the point where we are not in control anymore. 
And even now, we don't know everything. And we will never reach a place where we know everything. And the best virologists of our time acknowledge it and say, this is what we know now. And this is what we need to know and find out before we can advance. But we will always get to the edge where we've done what we could do and have to wait for the reign of God. The problem is, if we think that we know everything, whether you are the farmer or whether you are on the rain side, it makes you ortly. It gives you an attitude. I know exactly what's in, I know. It will lead to murmuring, to grumbling. And that's why James connects the waiting to grumbling. You can't wait anymore. So you start murmuring. And what do we say if we murmur against each other? I know exactly what should happen. I know exactly what I need. I know exactly what's right and what should have been done. It should have happened now. That's why we don't have to wait. That's why I'm very, very upset. And I'm entitled to it. You know, um, I can't understand why. It's so unfair what's happening to me. James encourages another type of attitude, a humility. I don't know everything. I'm not in control of everything. And I wait on God. And during that period, I keep on praying. Second thing is, he says, pray for each other. Therefore, pray for each other so that you may be healed. Do you do that? Do you pray for other people for their healing? Why not? Well, there's a lot of barriers to overcome, to get to the place where you pray for other people. Something about my story. I couldn't pray for other people. First of all, my idea of God. God gave us signs. And that's how he would, he would heal us. I pray for signs. I pray for new discoveries. I pray for new uh, knowledge. The right people. Um, I had to believe that God can also give, that he, God gives the rain, that God can intervene. And that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And that he is with us. And he can touch us now. I had to change my belief about God. And about sickness. Now, he, it's, it's, it's not that the, this is for the doctors. This is for us. You know, we pray physical sickness, we ask the doctor. When it's emotional, well, we ask a psychologist and we ask God. And spiritual is just God. No, everything is God. I ask him for everything. After I got convinced that um, I can ask God and God can intervene through personal experience and experiences that I shared with other people, it really does happen. Um, I had no confidence to pray with other people. I felt um, I'm not ordained. Now James says, first of all, the ordained people, but then he said, it's for everybody. Well, I felt I'm not righteous. You know, look what James says. James says, the, right, the prayer of the righteous. I've discovered that righteousness is not something that you can achieve. It's a gift from Jesus to you. You are his righteousness, he says. I found my righteousness in him. I, I felt that um, uh, I might be judged by other people. They might think I'm a weirdo. And in, in the subtle circles of my friends and my family, I just didn't feel comfortable. I had to overcome it. Take the courage to do that. And to pray for other people. Ask them, can I pray with you? And do it there. Practical. How can we do it? The suggestion, but a challenge. A challenge. Start with your household. Or the bubble that you're living in during this pandemic. Ask them to get together. So that we can pray together for our healing. When you get together, ask them. What can we pray for? So everybody's got to ask, would you please pray for me for this? 
It's a big moment. It's a big, big step of faith. To get together, takes faith. To sit there and to tell people, oh, the trust. We're getting to know each other. We're telling each other what we're thinking about God. The moment that we make our requests and the desires of our heart known to other people. Sanitize and take hands. We're going to pray together now. And then I recommend that you do it in silence. Two reasons. To give everybody confidence to pray. A lot of people can't really pray in front of other people. And they can't really express their hearts and the stuff that they really feel inside of them. Give them that space. And the other reason is that if you do it regularly, if you pray with, for, with somebody every day of the week for seven days, you'll run out of words. Just sit with each other. Pray in your head silently. You can just pray by sitting with the intention, just sitting with a desire. Oh God, heal us. Let your power flow through us as we sit here. And after 10 minutes, you can just say, Amen. And then you ask them, when are we going to get together again? Because you want to keep on doing it. I want to end with a story. One of my friends got sick. And um, I decided to journey with him. Stage four, cancer. And I visited him regularly. So our journey started with him wanting physical healing above everything else. So he asked me to come and pray with him. So I asked him whether we can meet regularly because I want to soak him in prayer. And he said yes. I wasn't sure because I realized that his idea of healing was just physical. I had a sense that this sickness might be unto death. I considered to recommend one of my friends who focus on physical healing and, and is more interested in cure than in healing, to come and pray with him and to spend time with him. He said, no, he wants me to pray with him. So we, we, we just talk about life and every day with me, I would ask him, so how are you doing? And his first words were, it's getting worse. I've got more pain, whatever. Till one morning, he said, I've got something to share with you. How, how are you doing? I've got something to share. He said, something happened between me and my wife years ago. And it was a very painful situation. We never got over it. And uh, it, it separated us from each other. Up to today, we, we didn't have the connection anymore. But the miracle took place. We reconciled last night. And he said, it's, it's wonderful. I can't tell you how wonderful it is. A day or what later, he said, I reconciled with, with family members, with colleagues. And a, 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 some time later, he said, I've got so much peace. And he said, this is, uh, I'm, I'm the happiest than what I've ever been in my life. I, I, I couldn't help, you know, but just hug him and, and cry. Because I felt God is answering our prayers. Just look at the emotional, social, spiritual healing. He said, I'm ready to go. I don't fear death anymore. And in that state, he died. I miss him. I had another friend <clears throat> that we prayed for also in stage four. And he was miraculously healed. Um, we had different uh, views on what happened. The doctor, who is not a follower of Jesus, said that he altered the medication. And that's why this person got healed. The person that got healed said, I thank God for the alteration in the medication because God healed me through the medicine. I stood there and said, I felt, I just felt, I have no evidence for it. This was a miraculous touch of God. He went into remission and he had another five years before he died. It's all up to God, but let's pray for each other so that we might, might be healed.
James says, where are you? Are you happy? Sing. Are you suffering? Pray. Are you sick? Call in the elders so that they can pray with you. So let's pray together. Father, we thank you that we can be here in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the life that you've given us. Thank you that you sustain us and that you heal us from all our diseases. I thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. For all that a thousand keer moes be En steeds die antwoord naar ons kan vind Vecht in die leen dat niemand omgeen nie Voor allemaal wat skaars vast kan hou aan Je voel alleen verlaten en gestroel Ek hou aan elke laaste stil Love of the Father and the fellowship of the Spirit be with you. Amen.